publishing the Lancet Medical Journal is the latest to suggest the pandemic is facing a serious tool in mental health. Welcome to this shortwave radio channel. So this is a quick review of the uh, ATS-25, which is a very unique novelty radio. Uh, it is very unique in the way that it is. Um, it is very different from standard portables. Um, it's a mix of DSP and, and SDR. It's a software-defined receiver because it's a computer running it, uh, which is looks like to be an Arduino. But at the same time, it's not an uh, SDR as we actually see usually with, you know, waterfall. It's just that it's a touch screen on the computer kind of giving you the controls of the receiver. It's based on the Silicon Integrated 4732 chip, which is a long wave, medium wave, short wave, FM, airband chip. And depending on how you set up everything, it actually gives you, um, you know, part or full spectrum of everything on the short wave and on the, the, the bands. Um, it is an autonomous device, meaning that it actually has a rechargeable battery inside and can run on its own like a portable. It's a difficult thing to change the battery. That's something to note. If you're not very tech savvy, changing the battery inside this is going to be a challenge. Uh, but you can, you know, use a, a battery pack if the battery ever runs down or something over the years and, and use like, you know, one of those packs that, that you can uh, use with, you know, to charge a smartphone, stuff like that. Now, uh, this is a long wave, medium wave, short wave and FM receiver. FM has RDS in the display, so you can have all the information displayed there. On the back, you have a antenna connector, which is a BNC. On the right side of it, you have a little switch, which is FM or long wave, medium wave, short wave. So depending on what you're listening to, you'll switch between either FM or the, uh, the bands that you want to listen to. There's a headphone jack here in the back gives you stereo FM on listening. You have the on off switch here and uh, you've got a USB-C port here for the charging capability or powering the device from an external device. On the front, well, big tuning knob, which is pretty, pretty big. So this is a huge tuning knob. And you've got, of course, a touch screen here, which is the uh, main control of the device. Divided into two menus, so when you press the next button, this is where it actually goes to the next menu. And the return button brings you back to the, uh, the standard button, the standard menu. So, uh, how does this thing perform in real life? Uh, this thing is surprisingly interesting. I actually have um, been using it for the past um week or so and um i've been having on shortwave some great 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 performance um it handles well pretty well a loop outdoor loop not too much inter you know interference and not too much uh, i mean um, um signals that you know might overload the device it's not impossible that it does i have noted that down way down in the bottom of the long wave range some shortwave signals and even medium wave signals pop up. So, you know, it's not a perfect device. It uh, tunes, it's a, you know, general coverage receiver tunes everywhere in all modes, AM, uh, shortwave, uh, single sideband. Uh, well, every mode has single sideband, upper, lower sideband, separate. Um, FM is only for FM um, in the FM range, 88 to 108. Some people have been saying, yeah, I would have loved this to have FM available for like the 10 meter band FM or CB FM DXing. Unfortunately, that's not available. So when you actually go on the shortwave bands and you choose mode, what you have is lower, upper sideband, AM, and there's a synchronous detection that you can actually turn on if you want. Synchronous detection seems to be not too bad, honestly, on this device. And that is interesting to note. 
So this is kind of uh, really nice to see. Uh, performance on shortwave is good. It has FM breakthrough on the telescopic that is included with it. Here, you guys know how you know this environment is pretty much an environment that is unfriendly to radios with um, problems on FM overload. If you use a, if I use the MLE 30 or use a loop, in general that goes away because these loops are not very sensitive to FM. It lowers the problem of the FM overload. Uh, single sideband is pretty much a pleasure to listen to. Uh, the AGC on this receiver is set pretty good. So when you listen to single sideband signals, it's actually not that bad. And um, it's interesting and fun to listen. And, you know, not tiresome like some other receivers are because of the AGC that's too fast. So when you actually check out what's out there um it it is definitely uh, not too bad of a radio for everything on shortwave in general a little bit of internal noise especially from the display when you start uh tuning around is um, i would say probably the biggest problem um but it ain't too bad compared to the ats20 it's actually better but it is definitely something to know about. And using an external antenna is much better and a much better choice on this radio if you plan to uh, use it. Now, it mutes when you tune. This is something to note. So that is something to definitely know that it actually will do that. Uh, one of the biggest drawbacks, I would say, of this radio in tuning is that uh, when you tune around, it defaults to a different mode. So say you used upper sideband, you're gonna go in underband to uh, try something and you wanna keep upper sideband, you'll have to re-choose the mode in the menu because it will actually go and default to whatever mode uh, this radio wants to be on the frequency you're gonna tune. It often defaults to uh, AM mode most of the time and it doesn't remember the mode so that this could be an annoyance another annoyance you might find is the menus are a little sluggish so you press you gotta you know be patient because um, they're not responding at a very fast speed it has bands so if you click band for example you'll have international broadcast bands so you can choose your favorite band say I want to go to 25 meters and then you can start tuning around and see what you can hear on this band. So, for example, here's uh, Radio Nacional Amazonas in Brazil. It also has the handbands, but the handbands, they have a little catch. Uh, they are European handbands. So that means that, and, and we'll say outside of North America handbands. So some of them do not have the full range that a handband should. So you'll have to punch in the frequency. An example of this is if I go to uh, 40 meter bands. So I'm on 7050 here, okay? It gives me the right mode and everything, so everything I tune here is already in the correct mode and everything. And, you know, I can tune around. There we go. If you need to fine tune, you click on it in single sideband, and the clicking gives you access to a fine tuning mode. go and you click and you're back on the frequency range so you know it's a very complete and very easy to use receiver but now let's go up to 7200 and here we'll revert back to 7000 why because for the rest of the world 72 to 7300 is not a handband so the band plan used is not the one in North America, so just note that if you want to tune in, what you'll have to do is simply key in, for example, 7300, 
Put yourself in lower sideband. And then tune around, of course, choosing the proper step to tune around. And then you'll start tuning around um, on that band. So, you know, you have access, but it's just that it's extra steps that you need to know of. I don't mind that much, but I would have liked it to be um, more of a North American style. It's less of a hassle to have the North American handbands that are wider than to have the rest of the world where it's actually not as wide everywhere. You, of course, have the uh, capability of um, using the BFO. You have the key input if you want to input your frequency. You've got bandwidth choices. So here are all the bandwidths that you can choose depending on what you listen to. Um, of course, you have the mode. The step can be chosen. So step is 1, 5, 9, and 10 kilohertz depending on what you can tune. Uh, you've got some presets that you can actually set. There's a mute button and there's a volume at the top. And the next menu you have, and this is one of the problems I was talking about. If you got big fingers, it's not always easy. So next button gives you seek. Seek is not an ATS, an ATS or ETM type. Seek, it's just, it scans until it finds the next signal. Uh, here's AGC. AGC is kind of wrongly configured. It's not an AGC, but an attenuator. So they, I don't know who did this, but he was not very aware of what an AGC automatic gain control. And it, it, attenuation is, and how different they are, it's in reality attenuation. When you click here, you can, and it says here attenuation. Uh, you can make it deaf if you want. If you have overload or something, you can increase. But it's called AGC, which is not what it should be called. Finally, you have your RDS on FM, and you've got the info for the firmware and where it comes from and all of that that is available on the uh, device. Performance on shortwave is good. I like it. I love using this for its uniqueness and for it is the display is we have to say it very beautiful medium wave lots of internal noise long wave horror story more noise and overload and all sorts of weird things so if you use this for long wave you're not going to like it medium wave and it depends on what you're going to use as an antenna but it's not always you know the best performance and it doesn't have an internal ferrite so it, this thing needs an external antenna to perform even on long wave and medium wave. Uh, FM works great, stereo with the earphones and uh, RDS on the display. Uh, sync detector is not bad actually. I've used it a few times. It, it, it holds on to the lock and seems pretty nice. Uh, although I never use sync because I don't find that to be necessarily such a useful feature personally. Uh, I think it's overhyped, and um, you know, I mean, I've used, I've, I've heard sync on on Sony receivers. Yeah, it's overhyped. I'm sorry, that's my opinion on it. Um, for the rest, the receiver is nice to use. I'm happy with it. It's uh, about 110, 100 to 120 ish US dollars. Is it worth that for me? I think it is. It's built well it's a metal case not a plastic case uh, and it works just great the battery life uh, I've used it the longest I've used it on the battery only is about 10 hours it's steam to old charge so 10 hours if you consider that there's a very bright uh, front screen like this and then bad actually and it's you know a little computer in there so it doesn't seem to consume that much power and uh, the tuning is nice chuffing or muting when it tunes that's something that might be a game changer for some overall i like this radio i see a lot of bad reports and i don't know what people were expecting out of this ats25 i think the bad reports of people not really understanding what they actually purchased because honestly it works well now the question is oh well i'm looking for a shortwave radio i'm going to get this I wouldn't get this. I would get a regular portable, um, you know, whatever, next age data, Texan, whatever, uh, rather than this. 
this is more for the tech side of, of, of radio. If you're an enthusiast of shortwave radio, want to see something different and want to play with something very unique, um, well, this, this is nice. And it works well and it's very stable. Doesn't, you know, the ATS-20 crashes regularly. This has not crashed on me at all in all the, the hours I've used it. Uh, software seems to perform well. And the added bonus is that this thing probably can be upgraded at some point with even better firmware. And I wouldn't be surprised somebody comes up with a firmware that even shows a little waterfall on that screen. So, you know, that's the possibilities of the future of this ATS-25. Overall, I like it. It's a nice little device. It's unique. Maybe not for the first radio of anybody. Maybe not for a radio that somebody's wondering if, you know, what good radio it is. Um, it receives well on shortwave. Like I said, um, it's more of a novelty thing. It's more of something that curiosity might want, you know, may make you actually buy it. Uh, but um, a regular portable is probably much better. Sensitivity wise, it does receive pretty much everything that any other radio will receive. Uh, so it's, it's nice. And the sound quality, it's okay. Sound quality is not bad and all the bandwidths in it are, are nice because you can switch the bandwidths and, and uh, depending on what you want to listen to. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.